Hi, welcome to Quicksort 101. My name is Dexter Ware. I'm Adrian Waters. That's Sil Ware. I'm Taylor Walker. Christopher Young. I'm Melissa Venable. Quicksort is a divide and conquer sorting algorithm. Before we take a greater look at Quicksort, here's a bit of history. The Quicksort algorithm was created in 1960 by a student in the Soviet Union named Tony Hoare. Hoare developed the algorithm in order to sort the words to be converted to an already sorted Russian to English dictionary. The Quicksort algorithm finds the location of an element, then splits the array into two sections. This element is called the pivot element. Quicksort has a worst case running time of theta n squared. Although the worst case running time is slow, Quicksort is one of the best sorting methods. The best case running time for Quicksort is theta n log. Class, I'm going to speak about the two parts of a, a Quicksort function. Uh, first off, the partitioning part, and then I'm here to discuss the Quicksort. Right within the Quicksort method, we're passing through the array and the two elements of the array. The uh, P and R. P is going to represent our least most value, R is going to represent our greatest value. Within the partitioning function, we pass the array through so we can get our pivot point is equal to Q. At the bottom right here, you notice there's two methods. This one is just to check the left side of the pivot point, and it's going to keep it the algorithm Q minus 1. Right here is um, checking the right side of the uh, algorithm of the array, which is Q plus 1, and we're going to get our value for R. And this is how the quick sort function works. Okay. Now we're going to talk about the partition portion of quick sort. And before we talk about the partition portion, let's figure out what a partition is. So a partition is just another word meaning to divide. So if you divide something, you cut it in half, or how many other pieces you want to cut it into. So for an example of partition, let's think of a pizza. So we have a pizza, you usually get it in eight pieces or eight partitions. And then those eight pieces or partitions can be used in whichever way you want to use them in. So in this case, they're being used to feed eight people, or if you're greedy, one for yourself. So now that we know partition, what partition is, on the board right here, I have the pseudocode for partition. So as you can see on the board right now, this is the pseudocode for partition. So this is the, not necessarily the code you would just automatically put into your computer or IDE to run partition of the port part of quicksort, but it's just enough to pretty much give you a gist of what it would look like. I'm not necessarily going to go through each point, but I'm just going to show you what partition does. So the main purpose of partition is to find the pivot point. And the pivot point is like the point of reference that is used to um, compare the different sides to see if it's greater or less than the pivot point. So right now I'm just draw a little quick example where I'm going to use um, nine different pieces. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, so okay. So right now these are, these represent these bars, nine represent different quantities. So you know this could be five, three, and whatnot, and so on. So now this array is being passed through the partition portion of Quicksort. And first thing it's going to do is find the pivot point. So this right here is the pivot point. Now the pivot point doesn't necessarily have to be in the middle because you can randomly select any part to be the pivot point. But ideally, you would want to be the middle point. So when you find this pivot point, it's going to compare the different values to see if they're greater than or less than the pivot point. So right here, this example. This right here, you can see is shorter than this, so it's less than that. So we moved over to the left side, and then this is greater than the pivot point, so this would be moved over to the right side. Now, it's not necessarily moved over in order or whatnot. So after this is done, this will go back and be called back into the actual quicksort portion that was previously explained. And then after it's called back, it'll go back into the partition and then it'll find another pivot point for the left side. So this is not just how it will look, but just to give an example of finding the pivot point on the left side. 
So this might be the pivot point on the left side this time, and it'll find a pivot point on the right side. So this right here is like a subarray. So it compares from this portion over here to this new pivot point to see if it's greater. You see, so it stays over here, but this is greater than this. So it's on the left hand side, so it's going on, on the greater than side. So that's how it kind of breaks it up in piece by piece. So the same thing would be done on this side with this new pivot point over here. So this is kind of like this is the divide portion of quicksort. You know, if you say quicksort is divide and conquer. So this divides it, and that's how it kind of breaks it apart so it can sort faster. And this is how also similar merge sort works. So it pretty much does this over and over again, and then this will go back to the quicksort and where it will do what quick, the quicksort function does, and then it tells sort. So that's the partition part of quicksort. So now we're going to select the pivot. The pivot is usually the middle number, and this sentence it will be five. So now that we have five, everything to the left of the pivot is going to be smaller, and everything to the right of the pivot is going to be bigger. So now we'll go through and compare the values. Is four greater than five? No, it is not. Is 10 greater than five? Yes, it is. So we'll select 10. Then we'll go to the right. Is two smaller than five? Yes, it is. So since two is smaller than five, and 10 is greater than five, these two values will swap. So now we have six. Is six greater than five? Yes, it is. And you go to the right. Is eight smaller than five? No, it's not. So eight will stay. But five is equal or smaller than the pivot, so therefore these two values will swap. So now, as you can see, everything to the left of the pivot is smaller, and everything to the right of the pivot is greater. So now we'll select two more pivots. So the pivot for the left side will be two, and the pivot for the right side will be eight. So now we'll start with the left. Is four, is four bigger than two? Yes, it is. So then therefore, these two values will swap. Now, as you can see, the left side is sorted. Now we'll go to the right. So now six is smaller than eight, and 10 is greater than eight. So therefore, the pivot will stay in the same place, and therefore, our array is now sorted. So for this turn, our pivot was going to be 8. So now, everything to the left of it needs to be smaller than 8, and everything to the right of it needs to be bigger than 8. So, we have 9. Is 9 bigger than 8? Yes, it is. Then you'll go to the right. And now you'll say, is 7 less than 8? Yes, it is. So since these two values, um, one is bigger and one is less than, we will swap them. Now we're at 4. Is 4 bigger than 8? No, it is not. Is 2 bigger than 8? No, it is not. Now you have to go to the right side. It is 5 less than 8? Yes, it is. So since 5 is less than 8, these two values will swap. Now, as you can see, everything to the left of it is smaller than 8, and everything to the right of it is bigger than 8. So now we need to select another pivot. So in this instance, the pivot will be 2. So now everything to the left of 2 needs to be small smaller than 2, and everything to the right of 2 needs to be bigger than 2. So now we'll start off. Is 7 bigger than 2? Yes, it is. But is 5 less than 2? No, it is not. So since 5 is not less than 2, then the 2 and the 7 will then swap. Now we need to pick another pivot. The pivot this time will be 7. So, everything to the left of 7 needs to be smaller, and everything to the right of 7 needs to be bigger than 7. So now we have 4. Is 4 less than 7? Yes, it is. And then you say, is 5, is 5 greater than 7? No, it is not. So therefore, these two values are swap. And therefore, our array is now sorted. Hi class, I will be giving you guys a real life example of a quick sorter. 
Um, and my example will involve a classroom picture of students lined up from smallest to tallest. Um, pretty much, we're going to want to take a picture with uh, random students to have their picture in order from smallest to tallest. And All right, so now I'm going to choose a pivot. I have him as a pivot point. All right, so now that she's smaller, she go this way. All right, now she's on the left side. She's smaller, she go on the left side. All right, now he's smaller, he goes to the left side. Now we need a new pivot. She's smaller, he goes to the left side. Now we have a quick story. Simple. Within the past 10 minutes, we have seen us explain the quicksort algorithm. We have given you the history of quicksort, the definition of a pivot, the best case and worst case running time, an example of the partition stop within the algorithm, showing an example of a quicksort using cards and a real world example with the class picture. We hope that you now have a better understanding of quicksort. If not, feel free to replay the video. Bye! Thanks for watching!